it started with choking and, and like low level violence. So he got a reputation. They yeah. called him the zoo man. But Knoxville's first serial killer case will always be unsolved. It's an unfinished case. It's an unresolved question. It was October 1992, the week before Halloween, when these woods off Cahaba Lane turned into a crime scene. It's like you go over here and here's, here's a body. Then you look over here and you say, oh my God, there's another body. And then you go back over here and you find skeletal remains. They'd been raped, bound, and strangled. Some had a history of prostitution. That would help lead investigators to a man named Tom Husky, known to local prostitutes as the Zoo Man. Thomas Husky is one of the worst serial killers literally known to man. He was charged with rapes and murders back in 1991 and 1992 in Knoxville, Tennessee. He is also known as the Zoo Man because he worked in the Knoxville, Tennessee Zoo. He had an apartment there. This is where he lured prostitutes, um, just really naive women. He lured them there. They don't know if he killed them there and he dumped their bodies in an open secluded field. He still hasn't been charged to this day because he claims he's had um, multiple personalities and things like that. They've tried to charge him and they have the charges but they just won't convict him. Thomas wasn't even caught until a victim got away. He was actually caught actively choking a victim whenever the cops popped up on him, which I think is insane that he just had no care to just be doing this stuff when people just popped up on him. I met up with John from Exploration Unknown and he took me to the location where uh, Thomas dumped these bodies. So we're going to get into that. So I'm back with John, YouTube Exploration Unknown. Check him out. <laughs> um, we're actually at the dumping site where Thomas Husky killed these prostitutes. Well, his alternative identity killed these prostitutes. They drug them out literally just from this walkway and we're going to actually go up to um, the circle where he just committed these acts. It's just crazy to be right here, you know? It is. Like, you see the footage. And yeah, you see exactly. You see bringing the bodies out. Yep. And the, the guy talking about when he found them and walking up there. And it's it's pretty much, other than a little bit more foliage, it's the same. It's not exactly. changed in all yeah. these years. So it's definitely got that feeling to it you know you think something like dark like that they would like block off and just want to like forget about you know but the fact it's just still here like untouched it's just like yeah it's crazy and there used to be mattresses up here which they used yeah for obvious reasons yes but yeah his alternate identity call i think yep. he called it um was allegedly what did it yeah and he's never been charged with murder no nope. that just blows my mind like it, yeah it was, it's hard to even like think about that you know it is it's amazing that yeah how can you say exactly exactly didn't get convicted yeah. because of the technicality exactly like yeah so we're going to check out the circle yeah where he committed x yeah. he worked with his father at the knoxville zoo and his job was cleaning up after the elephants at his home authorities found key evidence he took mementos earrings rings money chief david davenport then worked with tbi and would later sit down with husky making a shocking discovery this is it oh god yeah so i guess they removed all the mattresses yeah, when they people, got the think, bodies out i think the women stopped bringing john's up here after all that you know it's kind of yeah people you knew like in a weird way, co-workers that have been murdered yep. happened here, you know, it kind of draws you away from it. And I honestly wonder how many people, I hate even think of that, but you know, some people use like, the identity thing is like a mm -hmm. route out, you know what I mean? First time I talked to him, it was Tom. And we left the room to get some paperwork and we come back and he was Kyle. And from Kyle, he progressed to, Philip Dax was an aristocrat. He had the, had the voice down pretty good. He could have been an actor. One of Husky's personalities, Kyle, confessed to the murders. I thought it was all act. I, I think the whole system got the bump. I never had any doubt. I think it started with a violent act and it escalated. You yeah, know, it started I think exactly. He started out as choking. Yep. And then it escalated to him killing, to the witness. 
I don't know if Thomas even initially meant to hurt these people and literally kill them. A lot of the locals say that they think he was just got too out of hand after choking them and one, he eventually just strangled one of them. Uh, you know, he says all this alternate personality type of things and I don't know how much I believe that part. I think he just let it get too far and just kept on doing it. He just couldn't stop. So there was two locations, you know, you got the zoo, yes. which it thinks that, of course, we can't get access to that, they yep. allow that, but this was the other location. He would bring them here, they would come up here, the, the, the actual report said there was a mattress, you know, covered in condoms and just... No way. Yeah, all over the place, right up here in this area. <sighs> and... People are sick. It started with choking and, and like low level violence. So he got a reputation. They yeah. called him the zoo man. That's where the- Oh, so that was there. like, it was like a thing for him to come here and bring people. Yes, the local wow. officers knew him as the zoo man. It's crazy, it happened so close to home. Knoxville is very close to me and it's just insane that somebody that worked in the zoo with elephants did something like this. And he might not have even been caught if that victim went and went to the cops and she survived. So, you know, he was this guy that worked at the zoo. He was, you know, this big bearded guy and he would bring them here and he liked to have rough intercourse. Yeah. Like that was his kink. Yeah. And it escalated more violent. And then he got the reputation. And then finally, the one lady, he, he really- uh, Took it too used, far. Took it too far. Yeah. She reported it. And that's when they came and caught him. He was arrested. Yeah. He was arrested before he ever committed his first murder. And he was- caught in the act wasn't he, was he doing caught. something when they came up here yeah he was i think he was strangling her and oh my gosh having intercourse at the same time and that's they caught i sorry i thought i saw something yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean to look off and when you're that. like a like an area you're like extra aware you know yeah and you know there's a lot of activity here too yeah. spiritually yeah and so it's kind of you feel on edge but yeah it escalated it became more violent and progressive and more violent and then, once he was arrested and released, that was the last straw. He's like, I can't leave a victim. Exactly, anymore. that it just, a light bulb went off. He's like, okay, no more, no more paper trail. The dump on location of the bodies is right beside the highway. You, when you're there, you have trouble like hearing somebody talk just because of the cars, it's literally that close to the highway. And the fact that they never even knew about it, it's, it's crazy. The aerial view, you can see the perfect circle where he had the mattresses and just all these women just up there. and. It's just scary to think that living in the neighborhood, they had no clue what was taking place there, all those bodies, and it's just, it's crazy. I'm not gonna give the source of this because yeah. I don't know if they want this known, but okay. he had an apartment at the zoo. And from my understanding to this day, it's just kind of been- Pushed. Know, the doors have kind of been closed. They yeah. store a few things in there and that's it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's like still in use by like the zoo yeah. like staff. Oh my gosh. And there's an area behind the zoo in the woods where he committed some acts. Really? <laughs> I, I, was, I saw that he like lured prostitutes yeah. like to the zoo, you know? He, would. he had them at the zoo and this is where the bodies were found here. So uh, there is speculation. Did he murder them before bringing them here? Did he? Yeah, like them? haul them here. Yeah. But he was bringing them here for intercourse before that. So it's likely he murdered them here. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Because I mean, he wouldn't take them back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the fact that he worked there, he's not going to haul bodies in there. That would be seen. Yeah, you know? that would be seen. So I yeah. believe he brought them here, maybe against their will even. Yeah. Done what he wanted to do. And Handcuffed was, anything, you know? Yeah. So the cops went to Thomas's parents' house that was in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. They found all kinds of evidence. They found ropes and masks and just crazy stuff. And his parents had to have known just the evil stuff that he was doing, but it's hard to tell if they were covering up for him. What's sad is it could have been prevented because the signs were there. Exactly. You know, he was being reported for violence, but in that time, day and age, you know, if you were a sex worker, you know, she, the thing is she didn't pursue it. Yeah. She didn't pursue charges because yeah. that showed guilt of her being a sex worker. Exactly. She thought she'd be more trouble. Exactly. exactly. And you know, like sex workers, like I said, like if they show up missing, that might not be a big deal to people. Yes, yeah, especially you know? in those days. Like exactly, it was, it was the 90s, yeah. Night. Like look at the ground, like the dirt. It's barren. It is, it looks like desert, like ground, you know what I mean? Yeah. You see that, like the cracks and stuff? Present, but the murder trial would be tougher to prosecute. I uh, misjudged it tremendously. Today, the zoo man remains in a Tennessee prison for rape, but he will never serve a day in his life for murder. In my view, he should never be put back into a free society. I believe him to be a very dangerous man. As for the four women killed, no one was ever convicted for their murders. 
I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share. If you have any suggestions or any crime stuff you want me to cover, just put it in the comments and let me know. It was Thomas D. Husky's eyes the rape victim never could forget. Set so close together under those long eyebrows, they were chilling and yet revealing. Stand up and look at him and say you are guilty of every charge!